one. Come on now. Suspense, David Shapiro is with me in the studio tonight, back after his absentee uh, session yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, all share index in the red today after we've yeah. had a nice positive run. Five days in a row upwards. Uh, I'm not surprised that we're down. Um, investors will look for excuses. It came last night with the Fed minutes that uh, the Fed Reserve believed that the U.S. economy was under pressure, more job losses. Today we had Alan Greenspan saying, uh, you know, still more problems in the still more problems in the U in the U.S. financial crisis not over. So I think uh, investors took an opportunity to to take some profits. Commodity prices came down. It was one of those awful days where everything was down. You know, there yeah, was nowhere to looking, hide. Yeah, looking at every single mm. sector down, uh, so, all the indices. So. Yeah, nowhere to hide. A couple of shares managed to to make gains, but uh, those those were very few. Um, but you know, I, I don't think we should fret about it. I just think it's just a normal. Uh, in a normal volatile day right. after five days of good gains. It'd be weird if it just went upwards. Oh, um, I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not bad, but strange. <laughs> um, the results out of Investec today, mm, mm. the market didn't seem to like it too much. They were down about 3%, I saw at the close. But uh, what did you think? Uh, you know, obviously earnings per share down. I, th I think what it does expose just how difficult trading conditions are for an investment banking company. You know, if you read what they're trying to do now, they, I don't want to say desperate, that's the wrong word, but they're keenly or eagerly looking now to improve the retail base. In right. other words, to get funds from retailers rather than, say, relying on the wholesale market. And that's very important because... A significant portion of their money comes from, uh, not from only lending, you know, half of it comes, but the other half from investment banking activities. And they need to keep funding that. And that's, that's the problem. That's where the crisis, that's where it's difficult to get money. It's interesting, you know, uh, mm. Theo Foster from Galileo was saying that if you look at the cash they've got, they've got mm. 4.9 odd billion mm. pounds on the balance sheet. With that, they could buy old mutual. <laughs> I, I, that's true. Yeah, so that's, that's actually, isn't that incredible? It's yeah. a strange thought. So, mm. so, you know, despite obviously there's some bad mm. trading conditions, they obviously do seem to be in a relatively strong cash position oh, at least. Oh, look, they're, they're very conservative. But, you know, they're, uh, they, they've got as much capital as they need. You know, in, in all those respects, they're well funded and they will continue to, to, to run the business as conservatively as they have. But I think that uh, despite that, I think that conditions, you know, remain tough. That's their business. They're in the investment banking, uh, a very specialized niche business. But, uh, and, and we know what they've gone through. I wouldn't, I wouldn't write Investec off. You know, far from it. And I think when things turn around, they'll come back strongly. Another an interesting bit of news out just late this afternoon that uh, Alan Gray has mm. taken up another 20% in Gold Reef. That's very interesting because, yeah. you know, they're big, big shareholders in Sun International. Right. They obviously like mm. those uh, They love gaming. Gambling. They yeah. love <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think they're anything but gamblers, Alan Gray. If yeah, you, I hope if so. If you met them and you knew their stra you know, strategic approach, I think. But, but obviously they recognize that people love to play on. <laughs> Right. the slot machines and that the returns are very high you know for every rand you put in i think you give the casino probably uh, 90 cents and you get back 10 or something yeah, like that so, so it's a wonderful business but uh i'm not sure who the sellers are you know uh, yeah they said uh, something cas casinos austria international oh, okay uh, i'm not sure who all right they, so who offshore they holder yeah 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 mm. so the the gold price is going up nicely on the back of this sort of they've got, they must have faith that that things are going to turn around because the one thing that's worried me is even casinos at the top end of the hospitality uh, you know, gaming and top-end hospitality have actually been under a, a lot of pressure. You know, we've seen them uh, going ex-growth. So I don't know what the plans for Gold Reef are from an expansion point of view, but obviously, obviously they've got faith. That, some that optimism is, mm. there. Bit of a pessimistic note struck by S&P on that UK downgrade mm. of the outlook there. It, it hammered sentiment yeah. in the UK. And that's why we saw Investec down, All Mutual down, I think Liberty International. All shares came down. Uh, it just it just weighed heavily on sentiment. And can you Imagine the UK no longer triple triple A. I know we Means didn't think we'd no, see the day. No, huh? it's, it no, just shows no. the impact this crisis mm. has had. David Shapiro is with Sasfin. If you were invested in the J 